We did it. We are here in the first game of Hero Marine versus Clown. Yeah, we are. So in the upper right for Team Liquid, looking to move on to knockout bracket round three. Start his run there for, for Team Liquid. It's Clown. And his opponent in the bottom left, spawning as the red Terran player. He is Hero Marine. The biggest of games been around been around forever i guess technically clem was also, has also been around for a long time but he's he had uh, i guess now it's more relevant to finish the story we started when maru was playing and mentioned of course that clem was for a long time one of those guys that was people a known somewhat of a known value somewhat like rainer oh there's a young player that's really good that's high up on the grandmaster ladder that takes games off these guys all the time but not quite old enough to play in the wcs circuit yet and of course starcraft 2 We've been we've been playing this game for what 14 years now, so just about in a month or so. So uh, crazy to think that we've you've got we've literally just got multiple generations of players for the game, which is uh, just one of those fascinating things. Now these now these are the guys in their early 20s grinding it out and giving us these great crazy matches. But uh, we'll just have to see what Gabe has in store for Clem as uh, TVT pretty traditional in terms of the openers. Expectations are Reaper. Reaper into Hellion or Reaper into Cyclone. Sometimes you do Reaper Hellion aggro with like a Liberator around the side, or you go for something like that Cyclone drop. I don't know about you, Bayo, but Clem's, Clem's Cyclone micro is still pretty good, even with the nerfs. So I wouldn't hate to see it. It's a build I like, even though it's not as strong as it was on the, the previous patch, but it's uh, it's good for the reason that the Cyclone lockdown is still strong and you can still kind of just micro against people and dodge shots a lot. Yeah, and you know, actually, Theoretically, right? Yes, the lock on micro is, is a little different because you there is that dead time now where you're not you're not locking on anymore. But that also means that pick up micro if you're good at it, theoretically maybe makes it even a little bit little bit stronger because if you can break that lock on, that's a solid what is it, five seconds, three seconds, something like whatever the timing is, where you yeah, don't have yeah, that lock true. on available. If you can maintain it on your own, maybe that's worth doing. Um you can minimize like that the damage window is smaller, so you can maybe take a little bit less. I don't know for now though. Eric's double guest factor for both players, Clem, Hero Marine, Command Center behind this as well. So we talked about, hey, maybe we see something weird, aggression. Maybe Paul Dolan Dolan goes and whispers sweet nothings in Hero Marine's ear and sends him off into Fairyland. But for now, we're not going to see that one, right? Same build, same opener, very optimized, starport behind. So the question then becomes, who do both players decide to get aggressive? Does one player decide to get aggressive? Is it a third base timing? How do you, we, we have this safe opener. Barracks Double Guest Factory Command Center is the thing for a reason. It's defensive against aggression. It's aggressive against defensive things. But now that we're having this very mirrored build, how do you play out of there? And for now, we are seeing one tiny difference. Here, Marina, a little bit more defensively, getting that Widow Mine, shutting down any sort of Hellion Reaper play that might run across the map. Yeah, the, the biggest things to keep in mind for this phase of the game is that both players, you're typically feeling vulnerable until your first starport unit is out. And that's that's what everything is gonna revolve around. So if this if Clem goes for the second cyclone here, it could be could be that type of drop play with it. He might just try to drop everything that he has as he's gonna get the tech lab instead of a second unit out of that or another unit out of the factory. He did make the Hellion. But for Hero Marine, I feel like you're gonna get tanks. Maybe he's just gonna get into his Raven production a little bit earlier. And it is it is such a it is such a tricky matchup in that it revolves so much around building these units out of the individual production structures. Where in TVT is unlike any other matchup, you'll see lots of workers get killed, and it'll have almost no impact on who's actually ahead or behind because those little trades in this matchup, they oftentimes aren't going to stop you from building that one tank or that one raven that you're building at a time, and they take long enough that you can kind of sustain some losses and still get them going. But the drop has arrived, Widow Mine manages to get a little bit a uh, bit of a dodge there on it doesn't lose the drop doesn't lose the cyclone i think he got the mine too so some early pressure from clem but, but nothing crazy i do i do say i'm not surprised that hero marine is the i'm gonna open with the raven in the tank and play this one as close to the chest as i can get this to that comfortable macro position maybe we see something like uh two two ravens into viking production and then a push from clem but the third base is going to be the choice for hero marine yeah, I really like what we saw here in Marine do, though. He kind of had this inkling that Clem might shark around, look to run in from a different angle. So he postured himself on the map and 
did he get every part of that drop not nah, some units survived but he got the medevac down he got the uh, the production heavy unit the gas heavy unit this thing that when we talk about well starport production time it, so in, in a protoss game we talk about how important robo production time is right because what do you get colossus immortals observers prism it's a it's a big question same is true in tvt of the starport do you build ravens do you build medevacs do you build vikings if you're on a tech lab here it's it's a lot of production time that you got to worry about so knocking that medevac down early means that there will not be another one for quite a while and that gives here marine a ton of space in this world to go maybe take a third base as the third base is halfway done to get more ravens to just play this to macro up just that much more into the mid game so it, it might not seem like a lot but knocking that medevac down really unlocks the map for here marine for quite a bit I guess the next question though is do you try it all to get aggressive with these ravens or just keep it home defensively so if Clem ever decides to go try to siege up into you you have a nice easy shutdown yeah that's the toughest that's the toughest question in TVT you know one of my one of my favorite favorite speeches or spiels about this specific uh, question is uh, demo demo I think a long time ago had a great answer for it but um I I have always felt this way as well and it's that when your opponent in tvt sends all their ravens across constantly and just dumps their energy in your base they are they are more or less asking for you to push them because the other thing to keep in mind is hero marine's defensive style he also had the ravens faster look at that energy on his ravens he has the interference matrix ability he could shut down all the tanks that clem has clem's tanks are kind of spread out so you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have energyless ravens across the map that you kill like two or three scvs maybe but your opponent is still mining their gas they're still building their tanks right like when you deal damage to the mineral economy in tvt it doesn't have too much of an effect until you actually have enough production to be spending those minerals because it, it does just revolve around that one 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 so much so I, I like i like that hero marine saves the energy but i think for clem it's like it's kind of a bold it's like a bold confident kind of choice to say yeah i'll i'll, I'll throw a turret at him early on but he's the one with two ravens that have about half their energy and when they take their first fight whenever that is your marine will have three full energy ravens so it could take six siege tanks off the board with that if he wants to i was gonna ask you actually how do you feel about here marine hitting like a one one timing because he's gonna at least have an inkling i don't know if he's gonna properly know but he's gonna at least have an inkling that well hey my opponent opened medevac so that means likely he's only on two ravens instead of three they came out a little bit later they're gonna have less energy if we have the same number of tanks i'm gonna be able to shut down more tanks than he is i'm gonna have more tanks firing for effect maybe that is the timing that he can hit i don't know for now though clem knocks down the supply or puts the supply depot down it is immediately going to die but it's a nice scout off it shows everything that's happening and Sim's done for both players combat shields is done soon for hero marine but it's not here yet upgrades done soon but not there yet so really can't stick the fight and the game does go on but again three ravens to two one one's done soon is this the timing you hit yeah it's i feel like two two is still where players generally aim for because forgetting or not forgetting the armory is such a crucial aspect of late game taryn like the it, we all we all harp on it and every everybody will to the end of time because because of what marines are as a unit but the upgrades are just always going to be the most important thing for them so while they are lined up i i don't know he the, the jockeying for this position can work i don't think necessarily because of the one one but it's mostly just about the ravens like if he could deny the third it would be nice but the siege tank spread becomes like okay maybe you interference matrix the two and then you try to siege up right below the pervert pillar and they kind of crawl up to that spot or or he drops the back of the natural and uses the tanks to zone away too can also be a good play since he doesn't have full coverage on this side yeah clem's tank actually cannot reach those marines behind the gas that is just frustrating and there we see the first interference matrix so he says okay now i can just run up and attack in this base and well Clem does have two full energy ravens of his own. He's going to try and send some units out into the middle of the field to catch maybe reinforcements, but very good defensive play thus far, Bayo. It is. And yeah, this uh, thing in the middle of the map, he's not going to catch reinforcements. He's going to try to sandwich this army, but anti armor missile is going to go down and these Marines could melt. A couple of Marines stuck at the medevac, though, is a problem. And we talked about Raven energy and who has more, who has less tank shutdowns. Uh, you still have enough energy in the Ravens. Here we try to stim on top of this. The tanks are shut down. He wants to drop on top of it. It looks like it's the right answer, though. He's, he slams this down. Yeah, his tanks go down, sure. But here Marine got a lot more. That looks so hard for here Marine to take that fight. And somehow, it actually worked out for him really nicely. Uh, it's it's this this map. Really, do you have like a, these alleyways he tries to move through? It takes 
quite a bit of a pot shot. There's no tanks over on this third, though. Good opportunity for Gabe to sprint forward and try to get on this. He pulled everything out towards the natural. Now this base is completely exposed. So Hero Marine saying, again, I'm going to absorb the earliest aggression, go for some big counter-aggressive play, use the three Ravens full of energy. I didn't think he'd quite be able to break him, and I still don't believe that he's going to, but I feel like Clem sure? almost just opened the door on the third right there. I mean, you say he's still close. He's still a little close. He's got one of his other tanks in the back. I think the fact that he hasn't stopped the mining yet is what's giving him. Clem is still able to make money from this base so far. And I think that I think that with the reinforcements coming out, at least dislodging these two, if the third tank had moved up, maybe not, but the SCV pulls where it gets a little bit tough. But his 2-2 is about to finish, so he's gonna have that slight edge on the defensive side in the second year as well. Yeah, uh, so I guess the base is gonna get held at the end. I mean, I was looking at that rally, I'm like, oh man, you know, you say he's not gonna have Reagan, but this rally's coming in, it looks, it yeah. looks pretty Until strong. he lost the SCVs, it's when you lose, it's like the workers in this situation start to matter because they have so many barracks, and then, mm -hmm. then the economy damage actually does something. But he landed the fourth while that was happening, and it's fully saturated. So assuming that these liberators don't get up on him, it's not like he can't cover the tanks, but he's moved his whole army away. So I don't know. If like Hero Marine scanned this, he could just he could probably just pick everything up and just drop on that uh, that green health tank. Or he might even just run up the ramp since it only has three HP anyway. Yeah, actually, uh, there it is. There we go. Liberators. I, was say, I think as that happened, the liberators got both, uh, or at least got that fourth base there. Mm -hmm. Liberators sieged up the fourth and the third, triggered Clem to pull back back into the main base or back into the natural to deal with that. It's like well. Now my third base is wide open, and I was already hanging on by a thread. So Clem, you know, Knight, he did get up into plus one mech a little bit faster. That did mean that he was able to go in his tanks a little bit stronger trying to defend that fight. But, I mean, realistically... Those Ravens. We... The Ravens. I feel it's so big. I feel like it's so big to have that, that ability to pick and choose because the Marines, the Marines can't really do much without the tanks to zone for them right and then mm -hmm. everything else is kind of playing around the marines killing the turrets or pushing everything else away so just having having that utility and having that more prepared first attack from here marine just I, I i wasn't i wasn't gonna lie i'm like this looks like a situation where he lands the fourth gets it set up while he barely holds the third base the scvs were all mining most of the time so I was like, okay, if he just stops this right here, then all of a sudden the script can kind of flip because Hero Marine had just kind of taken his fourth during that, didn't really have it going fully yet. So I'm a little surprised there. Uh, I think it was a great, that was a great game from Hero Marine to be able to take the first map. I definitely did not expect Clem to, to break there, but uh, he did a really good job getting the Liberators on the outside during that. Just great use of the tech units. I think anytime you throw away tech units early in TVT, whether it's dumping Raven energy for just one or two SCVs, it rarely ever feels like it's worth it to, to not have that more defensively. But I guess based on when the attack hit, maybe it didn't even matter. I don't know. Just good, uh, good tactics by Hero Marine. Yeah. I can't believe that Hero Marine won that fight in the middle of the map, right? He had, yeah. it was a full sandwich. He, all of his tanks were shut down. Maybe there was one firing, but majority, if not all of them, were shut down. They weren't firing on anything. And then his Ravens did not shut down a single tank. They really didn't drop an auto turret. They had like one anti-armor missile on the bio on the on the bottom side that Hero Marine was able to fight first. So that, that had that going for them. But three Ravens, one anti-armor missile is not the value that you're looking for. So you're looking at this. It's like this should be a fight that comes smashes, and all of a sudden Hero Marine's not able to be on the map, and it's a problem. And instead, he kills all the bio and then realizes, oh, crap, I got a bunch of stuff left over. Let me kill the tanks, too, because it was kind of a, a two-part fight. Yeah, he moved everything. He moved everything towards the planetary when that Liberator came mm -hmm. over, too. And that was that was the moment when he dove on the tanks at the third again. He didn't fully repair the tanks. So the tank only had, like, five or ten health. So it's a couple of little things like that. Although, I guess... The anti-armor missile in any sort of marine fight is still pretty good value. I, I think he probably wanted to get a little more. He had the, the interference matrix on the tank in the natural when he did that drop. But I guess I, I was expecting a little bit sharper control maybe out of Clem. Maybe that's what caught me off guard about it. He, he typically finds a way to, to turn those situations around. So maybe, maybe our boy Gabriel is feeling extra big today. They say everything's bigger in Texas. So I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah, well... <laughs> Certainly, this would be a massive result for him here if he's able to take down Clem. So on the upper right on Ghost River, on this most aggressive, this shortest of maps, it's Hero Marine. Big Gabe. He faces off against the team Liquid Terran in the northwest. In blue, he is Clem. 
Yeah, this map, huh? This map leads to uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of, uh, what's, what's the, do we have the rights to, to steal a stream phrases? I'm just gonna say, I think I have the right to say Clown Fiesta. It is possible. This, how, how many games have you played on this map, Bayo? Because every, every single game I learn about a new way to one base from the other guy that I've never seen before. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know that I have a number for you, Nate, but uh, it, the answer is enough to cry. Um, see, enough to veto it, I hope, yeah, at least, I, but. Here's the thing, I'm a Zerg player, and more importantly, I'm a macro Zerg. I, I'm not someone. Yeah, that says, well, there you go. This map, yeah, then you're then you're right there with me. <laughs> I'm like, I am not, you know, taking a page out of Bly's book or something like, you know, I, I get to four bases, I'm 80 drones, like I'm hitting my macro cycles, my injects, like, like that's what sparks joy. And that just doesn't exist on this map at all. Here's no. like, okay, well, um, I, yeah, I'm going to try to hold the high ground. I'm going to we'll see what happens. And my opponent's going to hit me with something that I have never seen before. And I'm going to cross. I'm going to cross. There's only three different separate paths you can take to the third base. And it is about as far away from the natural as maybe even further away than most, most of the other maps that we've made comments or jokes about. This is Ghost River, though. Uh, and I, I guess to at least do the map some justice, the, the, the point of this is that you are going to have to play around the fact that playing macro is going to be a lot tougher. So this is one of those maps that's in there as that kind of flex. If somebody ends up having to play on it, then you just get to see typically a couple of players that are maybe not super prepared. Um, just kind of try to play a normal game on it, which is what I'm expecting to see since there was no proxy. I, I'm assuming maybe late thirds, but it should be still pretty straight. up. I have, I mean, you know, Nate, as much as I say, this makes me sad. It, it, it may it's not the type of map I enjoy playing. As a fan of the game, I am so happy that we have all these weird maps. Golden Aura and Dynasty and Amphion. Maybe Golden Aura is not all that weird. It's a very turtly game map, but and Ghost River and all of these maps that are diverse and do enable players that never want to build a second base to actually have <laughs> to play the game the way they want to play it. Because while it may make me cry and uh, may make, put me just kind of rocking and rocking my chair, tears streaming down my face when I get proxied by another weird one base build. At the end of the day, I think it's super healthy, healthy for the game that cheese is viable, that you do have maps like this, like Crimson Court that allow us to have weird, wacky games, aggressive games. So yes, I have uh, I have more trauma from this map and, and Crimson Court really than, than I, would ever, I would ever wish to have. I welcome that trauma because I think it's good for the game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like it, for most of these maps, there's something that you can kind of point to, right? And I, I, I have, at least I've always felt that uh, these, that maps are best, they're best enjoyed when there is a point to what the, what the, the difference that makes the map unique is supposed to be, but that that point is not overly hammered home, right? Like, oh, we're going to have a speed zone, but you don't put, you don't put them everywhere. You know, you, you may pick one or two spots where you feel like like in a specific situation, it could end up being really cool. And that's that's what keeps people from getting super frustrated about it. But uh, yeah, a map, map like this, pretty much it's just what, shortest rush distance ever, I think is, is more or less the takeaway. It's about the fastest path to the other guy's base that we've had on a map in quite a few years. Maybe, I think, I think I've heard some comparisons to Arena uh, back in the day, although that one, that one is legendary. Is it faster legendary than Legendary level. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I all I all I see or that uh, I think I think what I saw for this one is that it was a sub sub forty sub forty cross time. Most maps fall somewhere over the years in that thirty eight to forty two range. We had forty seven for quite a bit last year. Um, we had a couple get closer to fifty, but not not as many. I think. I think we had yeah, one probably, or two maps. There with, I think Beckett, Beckett has Beckett and Arena are special, right? Because they have the small bridges. That's supposed to be the intent. Like you're not walk, you're not supposed to be walking full armies over there anyway. And you're getting like Clontis Meyer. Now that anybody that remembers that map, then you're going into the ancient list of vetoed maps. I don't, I'm not even sure that ever got played competitively. That was that was vetoed. I think in almost every single series that anybody ever dared to include it in a pool. I think we got to talk about what's happening right now. I here, Marine, he's fainting aggression. He tries to put Reapers in to get scouts. Doesn't see anything. Uh, but the Cyclones, yeah, with the tanks at the front, not a lot going to happen here. But here's the big difference as we take a look at this. First of all, Clem's got his third base on the way. Here, Marine's a little bit slower. But Clem didn't get a single Raven. And here, Marine, he's got one. He's got two right now. Well, sorry. Ravens have been made. The big difference is there's no interference matrix for Clem, right? 
Hero Marines is just about done. So these Ravens that Clem has, they're purely for, say, an anti-armor missile in a pinch. But really, these are harassment Ravens that he's making, which means that this army that Hero Marine is going for is in a straight up fight, has the potential to be so much stronger than what Clem has. And as Hero Marine looks to posture, if he can kind of find a way on the north side where these rocks are, he can really start to wedge things in. Because again, Ravens, three Ravens with interference matrix versus two Ravens without it. I know which force I favor, and it's not all that close. Yeah, on one hand, like the considerations in this matchup, the interference matrix itself lasts, say, 11 seconds, right? And for the siege tank to go into siege mode and out of siege mode, it's about three seconds each, you know, with a little bit of random delay and then some shuffling or moving around. So it can still be tricky to be aggressive, even with this, without Clem having it, because A, he's not, he may not be 100% sure whether Sorry, Nate, do, you, do I still got you there? I think I lost you for a second. Anyways, attack goes from the front side. I mean, interference matrix are going to go really nice here. I, auto turrets as well go down. And I know you talked about it being hard to break, but if you wedge yourself into a corner like that, you get those interference matrices down. It's really hard. And now here we doesn't even need to go siege up. Everything goes down here. The third base is going to get broken. Looks like reinforcements might be able to handle this for the time being, but that's a lot of tech that Clem has lost all of a sudden. A couple SCVs go down. Although I guess at the end of the day, it's only five. There are still the Ravens on the field, but he's going to look to siege tank shots and that is going to work out pretty nicely. But Nate, do we have your back? Do I have a Nate? Is he talking? I still don't have a Nate. Okay. Uh, don't know what's happening with that one, but hopefully we'll get Nate back fairly, fairly soon. For now, Stim is just about done for Hero Marine as... Yeah, the first attack looked like it went fairly well for him. About 100 minerals lost difference, but kills off the workers, knocks down some stuff. The problem is, realistically, well, I was going to say that he lost a lot of his Ravens, but I guess he didn't. Send it back home. They got repaired. So at the end of the day, damage has been done to Clem, certainly, but it wasn't quite the game-ending break like it looked like it might have been for half a second as he, again, runs in and tries to make something happen. But anyways... Now the game goes on just a little bit more here marine he holds the middle of the map he doesn't really ha he's gonna have to wait for some time he's, he's got his stem certainly done but combat shields are, are not there yet we got him nate you're back welcome yeah i don't, I, I don't know if you're talking bayo but i can't hear you oh. if i'm the only one going out love you guys um let's fix this very quickly so nate can hear me that is importante uh nate can you hear me now yes great not sure what happened but uh i lost you the entire time so <laughs> Tell me what were you talking I got about? You. I got you. Well, I, I was I was doing a little I was doing a little weather report on the state of the production for everybody, mm -hmm. but it's all it's all lined up about even, more or less. Was uh, was all I was gonna say, Bayo. I think the production focusing so much on Vikings and not so much on medevacs, even with the bio units, kind of says everything about where this game is gonna go. Though it's it's gonna be that very positional play, fighting for the air control, fighting to get on top of the other army. Here, Marine, both of his Ravens just get snapped there for nothing that's a that's a little bit of a brutal loss though yeah that's really not what you want again these ravens were the pushing power that you really go for so without those yes he can move forward a little bit he's got some better vision i think he's got a lot more vikings but yeah it's eight vikings to six so maybe not a lot more but enough to really make a difference and the tanks are going to start to go down now lands the vikings wants to make the break happen here right here right now and the vikings have clemmer in the air so they're not really adding much dps but unfortunately for hero marine yeah, sure, he got the land off first. Technically, he had more army on the ground. It didn't matter. <laughs> Clem's reinforcements knock everything down, and all of a sudden, here, Marine is not in as good a position as he was. Yeah, he, he's got 2-2 on the way a little bit faster, but he lost a lot of that army, a lot of any sort of advantage that he built in the mid-game. It's all gone down. It's not there anymore, and now, well, he's got his third base. Fourth base is going to have to get taken, but this game, it's now something that Clem is going to be able to play around with a little bit more. Yeah, it starts to head towards the direction that all TVTs must eventually end at, which is either the, the full split map where it's just endless amounts of tanks and scans and Vikings. I don't think we're going to get that far with these players, but looking with those armies around the map for opportunities to jump on top of stuff, that's that's something that comes in big time. The 2-2 is a little bit later for Clem, about 20, 20-ish 20 seconds. Nothing super significant as long as the fight doesn't happen right as those upgrades complete. We have the scans coming down. He sees Hero Marine's fourth base and 
Yeah, I was gonna say, even with a map like this, we still end up, because of the way that both of these guys like to be, they can still have that macro game here. It just ends up getting weird, because now it's like, both of them are gonna be expanding towards the, towards the bottom side of the map, and those bottom two bases, and towards the center, will end up kind of being the last resources left. So if it gets dragged out enough, they'll have to be right across the screen from each other. The armies will be so close with nothing else to fight over, since there's no other resources on the top half of the map anymore. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, you, you talk about that timing maybe being a thing. It also gets awkward, right? So Ghost River is a super short map. It, what, what is it's like 36 seconds or something, natural to natural, whatever that is. It's very short, natural to natural. But as the game goes later and you start to expand away from your opponent, all of a sudden the map gets a really, I don't know that I want to say big, but the rush distance, the rally becomes a lot longer. Like if you're trying to attack down in this base, if come eventually takes it here marine he's got to go the full diagonal of the map and that is a lot harder to manage exactly like that's that's what the, the geometry is just mm. bizarre really it's like it kind of asks for you to just go for the base trade as soon as they move their army south to defend oh we got that kind of happening right now clem's army in the middle of the map looks like about 20 marines worth 15 marines looking to get damage on that fourth base but here marine there's okay no they're two tanks defending this so this is kind of hard to attack and he's gonna get into it anyways knocks the tanks down now his own tanks are seized and yes there are two tanks there defensively of clem but it's five of here marine so like yeah you have it defensively but they go down immediately Gabe, gabe's tried to make a couple of cheeky jumps this game he had both yeah. of his ravens get caught earlier he had the like and I, I felt like that was tough and then i almost i was gonna say unseaging every tank here that's that's really the only thing i don't like because he has a easy way to just crawl over to this planetary and once once the scvs you maybe you shell away at them a little bit to prevent some of the repair but he's got enough bio i think to crack it if he had been able to zone away the rest of that ramp but he kind of backed off a little bit from it and now clem is able to re-secure some of that position but he is still being forced to repair the, the planetary, so there's that. Clem gets a drop inside of the main base of Hero Marine, and all the Marines are pretty low, so it looks like he should be able to just defend that with his reinforcements. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, like, Hero Marine is forcing Clem to play the game that Clem should want to play, right? There's this big run by that's been trying to get damage done. Hero Marine's having to respond to a dropping everywhere. Meanwhile, he tries to juggle a fairly technical push. And I would generally say this is something that Clem should be favored. He's so fast. He often looks like he's playing in two spots at the same time. But somehow, Hero Marine is the one that's winning out on everything. Yes, this drop finally gets a couple of STVs, but Hero Marine's having a really nice siege up. He's shelling, he's knocking down tanks in a way that generally he shouldn't be able to do. Yes, there's interference matrix or two, but for the most part, tanks are staying alive. He's got another attack here on the north side, and that, well, the, the rocks get knocked down, so he's gonna stim up on top of this one. The drop hasn't got a lot done, so he's gonna knock tanks down here as well. And this is Hero Marine getting more value on kind of every corner in the map in the way that we would generally expect to see Clem doing. Now, Ravens are being made. The late game transition is there, and that does mean interference matrix is a problem. But the third base is undefended. Hero Marine with plus two, plus two here should be able to just snap it right down. Repair is going to try to be good, but the Marines can't get particularly close. Nate. They're so low here. The tanks are doing such a great job of zoning. But it does. I was going to say it. Unless you look at the supply, it looks like Hero Marine is, or, or Clem is starting to stabilize. But this supply is starting to tell a pretty different story. The Liberator ends up being clutch mm -hmm. there because it's really mm -hmm. he's not it's not like he could actually dislodge him if it wasn't for that But anti-armor missile on on marines that are already stimmed That's those are, those are units that are gonna get killed very very quickly and, and really what ends up biting him is that he couldn't run down the ramp towards the planetary because, well, there's a planetary there. So even with these trades feeling somewhat even-ish, I will say this, 3-3 three, three is about to finish for Hero Marine. He is gonna eat this. This is a fight that the trade feels kind of rough, but as he plows through, if he gets to any kind of even Marine versus Marine situation, that's a nice spot for him. Probably the biggest tell in this whole game of what we're looking at is that Clem just never started his 3-3. Three, three. I feel like I'm crazy saying that out loud, but I just don't see it at all. And now Hero Marine has it. So these trades are a little bit nuts, but I feel like there's a fight in a minute or two where there's some more Marines for each player. And that's that's where we really get to see that advantage carve itself out. So Clem's kind of shifting more into a kind of mech-based setup, really, right? Lots of tanks using Liberators, Vikings, Ravens, very low on medevacs. He's all about zoning this army away from him since the map is so small. Well, Nate, this is Byun versus Maru. And for some reason, Clem's taking the role of Maru in this setup because this is a game that we've seen quite often. It's eight racks bio versus Raven tank effectively and if you go that raven tank style yeah three three for your bio is nice you don't really need it your tanks matter realistically you're not fighting your marines don't matter nearly as much and generally when we see when we see maru and beyond play this this is something that maru wins he's the guy that gets the ravens goes the tanks 
Uh, Beyond, of course, the guy that likes to go eight racks, goes up to 10 racks and just cranks out Bio at a crazy value. The problem is, as we see, Clem is now finally getting up to his 3-3. Uh, his three, three. Once you get plus two on tanks, Stimmed Bio gets one shot by the tanks. It becomes very hard to deal with. And you talked to, you said it early on, this map or just maps in general on this map pool are so choked out that it's really hard to make something happen. So here we drops in the main base, also on the fourth base, gets rebuffed wow. or on both. And it just, for a second, it looked good. But when he had probably 30 supply of bio all stimmed up running into that third base and they just evaporated to two tanks, it's like, uh, it slows Man. down. Yeah. Man, it's, if here, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I feel for Gabe so much because mm. if he knew that right as he ate that anti-armor missile and tried to force it, if he knew that they were on the same amount of bases and that his opponent hadn't even started 3-3 and his was done, I feel like Gabe says, holy crap, I just gotta, I just gotta take a step back here. I just gotta take a step back, try to force a big head-to-head -head fight, but... The thing, the advantage of smaller maps for Terran in this, especially in TVT, is it's easy for the tanks to cover all the space. That's that's the biggest that's the biggest thing about it. So he's he's able to play a great position and Clem getting uh, getting on the scoreboard. No no two zeros over here today. Not for us. Oh, we had one. We had Maru and Shin, but other than that, yes. Uh, well, oh. yeah. Well, yeah. It's... Of 62 the and 11. 62 of the and 11. matchups that that we didn't that we weren't certain of the result before it started it had been pretty been pretty close i'll, I'll say I'll, I'll rephrase your honor and i i look at the uh i look at the supply plot though uh, unfortunately we can't i don't have an asset to show it but that supply plot at the end uh it's like here marine just craters but that's the problem right you go for this mass you go this eight racks style that we see in uh here marine go for and it can work it absolutely can but you need yeah, a... he didn't want to he didn't want to transition into the into the liberators and all that he's like i'm just gonna force it and just oh well, that's kind of what you like if you're gonna go for that eight rack style that's kind of how you play it right it's just i am building yeah, yeah, 16 marines brutal. at a time yeah it's brutal it's brutal this it's a brutal way brutal way to go to go out in that game that's just tough yeah but you know luckily we have a much more much less choked out map i guess uh side delta going from one of the most choked out <laughs> to one of the most wide open maps in the pool but Side Delta is going to be map number three. It's a wild TVT map because you have like three, really four, four or five different attack angles. You can move through different paths. You can attack through. Uh, can be hard to hold the low ground bases. Can be hard to hold the high ground bases. Gives us generally some really interesting games. So, Nate, we're going to get into game three. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think we're going to be a little bit back towards the, the realm of sanity over here. I can't wait. There we go. So in the upper left, in the red... Taking game one in a good position for quite a while, but not quite able to close it out in game number two for Mouse. It's Hero Marine. And in the bottom right, getting things getting things tied up here for us from Team Liquid in Blue. He is Clem. But yeah, 10, 10 seconds before the 3-3. Three, three. Just, it breaks my heart. It does. It does break my heart a little bit, Bayo. Um, for Gabe, for Gabe, though, I feel like he's played a very strong series. I know there are probably, probably a little bit more confidence for Clem in his non-mirror matchups, but the reality is it's still very hard to lose to somebody that's not better than you in TVT. There's not that many moments where you get to catch somebody off guard, right? That that constant jockeying of position really is what the matchup's all about between the two of them. And they both did that dance very well. I thought getting on the third base, especially on that map, it all seemed like it was going really well, getting the crazy upgrade lead. But Clem just kind of understood what he needed to keep alive, right? He was like, well, the planetary is here. I don't have to push into this tank line. I don't have to make any moves until he's actually killing the SCVs that are repairing it. He's only got one tank that's hitting my base, so I just don't have to worry about it. And it's smart decision making like that and kind of remaining calm in a stressful I mean, it was a stressful position to be in, right? He had that ramp cut off for a whole second and then Gabe gave it back to him. So I think that's something too, that uh, in hindsight, maybe maybe something that uh, to break down or analyze or look at later, but the move on that ramp between the planetary and the third base felt uh, felt almost game deciding. It really did. I was looking at, it's like, there was a briefly a moment where I think Kieran was up about 40 or 50 supply. It was like 195 to 155 or something. And you're like, wow, he's doing it. He's winning every fight. He's knocking the the, re the 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 run by the drop down. He's 
getting damage done on multiple fronts like he is making it happen but the problem with that style and we kind of saw it at the end of that game it is incredibly fragile marines <laughs> upgraded marines they do damage very quickly but they don't get that much tank here. yeah they do a little you take what, a couple less damage a shot with uh with armor upgrades but they still only have 55 hp per marine it's not a lot really no. at all so once you get those plus two tanks the covering zones of fire it can very quickly get to a situation where your marines are I, i'm not gonna say useless but pretty close so i, I don't well, on the one hand yeah. it felt like Pure Marine was gonna win that I don't really blame him for leaving when he did his his attack had kind of petered out and that eight rack style even though he had a fifth base floating over is still pretty all in especially against all those uh, against double factory and uh, multiple star port, all those factory. Raiders. yeah yeah the double factory is a really big thing to to key in on too and I think again it just goes it just goes uh it has to be mentioned that on the smallest the smallest map in the pool like you said when the siege tanks are able to one shot any clumps of marines that kind of end up passing by their range and the map is that small you know if he was if it was this map for example and you look at where the third and the fourth base are here you're not you're not taking a fourth base without exposing another angle to a pretty huge degree Whereas on Ghost River, he, he, his his third base was right next to his fourth, and his third base was also next to his main. And the walking distance to the natural is kind of far, but that choke point was there. So turned into a very interesting game, and we already have our first bit of action here as two uh, two of the pretty similarly set up drops just run straight into each other in the middle of the map, and we have I think Hero Marine lose the first Hellion there. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm looking. At this is like okay, generally. I'd say, ah, these are two Terrans. They're similarly skilled. This is this is fine. They're gonna kind of trade. I look at that setup for Clem. I'm like, oh god, Clem is cycling into the meta back. Hero Marine, you gotta run, run away. This is <laughs> this is a problem. Now maybe that's not fair to Hero Marine. At the end of the day, it kind of balances out one way or the other. I, I do think it's interesting that we're seeing players in this game in the series mess around with interference matrix or not. Uh, Hero Marine, he's got his Ravens on the way, but we're not seeing those interference matrix get researched, and it's a little surprising to me because yes it's an upgrade yes it takes time yes it takes gas it is such a cheap upgrade nate that like it's what is it like 25 50 gas or something it is so little that okay he's gonna get it now i was gonna say like why would you ever choose to skip it in this matchup because i mean you have that you have there's so much time great. on the tech really? lab anyways it, it it always i think it, unless there's very little reason to make just one raven mm -hmm. and then try to go into something else like you could but in this matchup two ravens is a kind of it's kind of specific because at that point when you're dropping two or three turrets or whatever if something tries something tries to attack you early or if you get sieged up like the the, the surprise ability of the turrets is always something that's going to be nice no matter how much they get nerfed the damage is still pretty decent if they're able to fight so like having ravens is always nice since they're fast they can help you defend lots of stuff and they're your, your detection but to not get the interference matrix in a matchup like this to me, it always feels a little bit wild. So I like that Clem got it. Uh, Hero Marine got his a little bit later, but it is it is one of those things that's really important. The other two, the other ability on the Raven, the anti-armor missile, we can easily win you a fight. It's mostly Marines if you get at center mass on the other guy, but you're, you're kind of needing them to be in a position where you can actually hit center mass too, right? So I, I completely agree with you. Interference Matrix is a, it's kind of a no-brainer upgrade and I, Honestly, it, it, it's so it's so cheap. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm 100% there with you. Yeah, what I think is really interesting in, in the context of this game, we have had very little interaction, right? It's one like one SCV for Clem going down and a Reaper, one Helene and a Reaper for Hero Marine. So in the context of this game, and just very very similar builds for the most part, Hero Marine's pulled ahead in Stim. He's pulled ahead in one one. His he's pulled himself four workers ahead. Uh, his third base is on position just a little bit faster granted it's a quicker orbital for Clem, so that's kind of the difference there but just kind of like through some small macro things here marine has built himself is it enough to say this is defining the game no it's not but here marine has been able to build himself just a little bit of an eco lead and you might say well look at it's four workers who cares it's, it's it's a mirror matchup and when you talk about when you have access to the same stuff minor advantages can rather quickly turn into major advantages so interesting to see i don't know that it's going to turn into anything necessarily clem can of course go and get a couple workers and it's fine but it is interesting to see hero maybe just slightly crisper in his macro uh in this game three it's where he likes to be right that's what we talk about he's he is the prototype macro terran player hero marine is not he's not the guy throwing out the two racks on game three 
uh, and and on I guess to some degree Clem isn't either but if you if you made me pick one of them I would say Clem would be more likely so these two drops actually kind of hit each other in the north side but that's kind of mostly what it's been right it's a little bit of a little bit of light interaction but nothing nothing super intense and I think that that's also just you know this map is big we have the sensor tower already out for hero marine so he wants to make sure he's got vision in case these drops make plays towards other directions good focus fire by Clem he actually takes hero marines medevac instead of trying to trade out for the few marines so I do like to see that and we get back towards that well it's going to be about getting the tanks into a position where they can threaten something important in TVT you're not going to end games by killing all the marines you end games by killing the the gas units that's those are the things that keep you alive if the tanks are there and you take a great trade you kill all the marines you get the scvs but he still has a couple of tanks sometimes that's that's really all it takes to zone you away for that next fight especially if you're if you're stimming and moving up ramps without combat shields uh which is about to finish but if he, he's taking the fight before it so there we go interference matrix does come down he gets hit with the anti-armor missile and then changes his mind about going back up against Caesar, just one tank gets another interference matrix and Bayo the Ravens only get three turrets down before they're picked off and hero marine just kind of calls his bluff on the third base and ransacks it dude Nate I said hey it's a four worker lead like it's probably not gonna matter but it is their mirror match and it might a little bit hero marine turned that four worker lead that like slightly crisper <laughs> setup into a 20 army supply lead that he immediately hit with and immediately killed Clem and it's not all, great. There was a lot of execution there on the attack, 100%. But it's not often that we can say, yeah, uh, one player just kind of macroed a little bit.